Uh, what's the what's the short version of where where do ideas come from and how can we get more of them? I think they're all we have. I think ideas are everywhere, and letting go of the idea that ideas are precious and that there's one right idea. And if you don't find that one right idea, you can't start writing. Um, and instead, just well, what if everything is interesting? And what if everything is a story? And what if it's more about attention and presence than it is about picking the right idea? It has been incredibly freeing for me, and I think for other writers too. Um, the world is full of beautiful and interesting and terrifying things. Um, any anything can become the vehicle for exploring the questions that you have about yourself and the universe. And so you don't need to necessarily go on this giant hunt to find, you know, the, the exact right word, you know, the mot, the, le mot juste or whatever. I think instead, what if whatever it is that you're seeing in you, around you right now is the thing that you work with? And you let go of the, you let go of the fear that it's dumb or that it's not important. And instead you embrace, this is interesting and this will lead somewhere interesting if I keep following it. That's something, again, that I think I have learned, or I have come to believe as a writer through seeing it happen over and over again in my own work, that it doesn't necessarily matter why I'm interested in something. If I'm interested in it, I can write about it. That was certainly true about A Boy Called Back. I don't know why I chose a skunk. I just thought they were cute. I thought they were interesting. I wanted to know more about them. They're adorable. Have you ever seen a little baby skunk? They're so cute. And there's this really interesting like dynamic with the skunk that... Yes, they're really cute, but what if they spray you? That's super interesting to me. And I didn't know all the beautiful things I would explore and find and when I started. And if I told myself, why is skunk? Skunks are dumb. That's dumb. I can't do that. I would have shut a door that has been such a wonderful story and has meant so much to so many kids and their parents, actually, too. Um, so one of my core beliefs about a writer, about being a writer, is don't tell yourself no. If you have a good idea, if you have an idea, Follow your idea. Don't tell yourself it's dumb. Um, it's kind of like um, improv. Uh, your job is in improv. There's two of you. One of them says something and the other one says yes and. Right? You're not allowed to say no. You're not allowed to say no. That's a dumb idea in the improv. You have to say yes and. So the same with, with ideas. When I have an idea, I tell myself yes and. Um, and I follow it. Um, if you tell yourself no, you have no, you don't even know why you have that idea because the back of your brain gave it to you for some reason that you can't see from here. So if you tell yourself no, that's a dumb idea, eventually what you're gonna tell, you're training the back of your brain to stop giving you ideas, I think. So if instead I just say, okay, yes, I'll do that, and it'll also be about this thing, and I just play, then it's not, it's about, it's about unclenching. Unclench is my new favorite word around writing. Um, play is hard because you can't make yourself play right but you can allow yourself to unclench and so if you can unclench and instead of focusing like what if it's dumb what if people don't like it what if it doesn't sell um what if it's a dead end if instead you say oh that's interesting I'll, we'll see where that leads what you learn later again it's like with that question of thematic hearts that you discover is you're like oh now i understand why i was so interested in that thing like you don't know it when you come up with it later with with some distance you can say oh that i was really smart of me huh that's super interesting. Uh, now, does that mean that you pick the one magic thing? No, I think any number of things could be a right thing. I do not believe in the one true path. I do not believe in the one true love. I believe that life is interesting and people are interesting. And there are absolutely uncountable interesting paths that you could take to create an interesting story. So do you believe feel better? destiny, soulmates, any of that? Or no, it's just... Make the most of what, what comes along. Everything is interesting. Like I love my my partner and I'm very glad that we're married. But no, I don't think that either one of us had we not met would have been destined to a life of solitude and unhappiness. There's a million zillion interesting people in the world. I think there are a million zillion opportunities for story and for love. Um, I'm super glad at the hand I was dealt uh, and that, that I took that I said yes and to it. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not, uh, I don't know. I mean, smarter people than I have, have talked about fate and destiny uh, in interesting ways. I, I kind of figure it's one of those questions that's so unknowable that it's not even very interesting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm much more interested in what, what is my dog barking at in that bush and why that bush and why last night and not the night before. And then you find there's a raccoon 
and raccoons have very fascinating little hands. Um, and that is something, and what is that raccoon holding in its little hands? And where did it get that thing? And what if I put that in a story? What could the raccoon have in its hand? Like that is more interesting to me. That is something I can actually comprehend and, and hold on to. Well, with that philosophy, you can't be messing around a whole lot with writer's block. You must just be running on, on whatever it is that you're, you're interested in. That. I get stuck all the time, but I also have a very good solution for writer's block. To me, it has turned out over and over again that if I don't know what to write next, I need to do more research. So again, when I was writing A Boy Called Bat, when I didn't know what to write next, I learned more about skunks. And when I learned more about skunks, I thought, oh, that's something that could happen in this story. And it led me to the next thing. But research doesn't just mean learning about the factual stuff. It also can mean thinking about yourself and looking inward and thinking about what you feel. And that is a kind of research that I think a lot of times might get overlooked by writers who get very focused on plot. I think plot is um, overprivileged when it comes to writing. I think plot's important, but I don't think it's the most important. And so spending time thinking about emotions and your own memories from your own childhood um, can yield doorways out of being stuck. Do you have a bunch of unfinished manuscripts from place like here's an idea I followed. I'm just trying to think of what the contrarian thing is. Why wouldn't we want to do this? Because it's a very good sales pitch. Am I missing something? Because why wouldn't I do it this way, your way from now on? If you have an idea and it's interesting, even if it's not because you find it's interesting, by virtue of that, it will become interesting. Am I interpreting that kind of correctly? Very much so. It already is interesting. Uh, you just need to be interested and notice. Uh, that's what I think. I mean, no, I don't have unfinished manuscripts. Um, I have some picture book ideas that I haven't quite cracked yet. Picture books are like poems. Um, but no, I, I don't have unfinished or unsold books. <laughs>